Now, without exaggerating, Shavuot is the moment we've all been waiting for. Since Passover, we've been counting literally to this moment. Uh, Leviticus chapter 23 and Deuteronomy 16 tell us when Shavuot is to take place. From the time of Passover, God tells us, you shall count off seven weeks. You shall count until the day after the seventh Sabbath, 50 days. And here is why it's called Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks, because it's separated from Passover by a week of weeks, uh, seven weeks. So this explains why it's also called Pentecost from the Greek, because it occurs 50 days after Passover. Now in Exodus chapter 23, God commands us that three times in the year, you shall hold a festival for me. The three festivals specified by God are first, the festival of unleavened bread, second, the festival of harvest, the first fruits of your labor, and third, the festival of the ingathering at the end of the year, where you gather in from the field the fruit of your labor. And of course, these holidays, as we know, are Passover, Shavuot, and Sukkot. But if the Bible describes Shavuot as an agricultural festival that requires worshipers to bring the first fruits of the harvest to Jerusalem to offer at the temple, then why is it celebrated as a day on which God gave Israel the Torah at Sinai? Now, following the destruction of the temple in the year 70 of the Common Era, the focus of the holiday shifted within Judaism to put increasing emphasis on Exodus chapter 19, verses 1 through 3, which says that Moses went up to God during the third month after the Exodus. So the holiday, celebrating the first fruits of the summer grain harvest, is also the day on which the Jewish people celebrate the astonishing gift of the Torah. And thus the holiday earned a new title, Zman Matan Toratenu, the time of the giving of our Torah. And interestingly, you can see both the emphases, agriculture and Torah, in Shavuot celebrations in Israel. While the more religious Shavuot celebrations include uh, staying up all night and studying Torah, more agricultural-based celebrations are held on kibbutzim, communal farms, all over the country that are focused on the harvest and first fruits. And these two themes are brought together in the synagogue where we read both the Ten Commandments, reminding us of Sinai and the Torah, and the scroll of Ruth with its harvest setting. One of the unique Shavuot customs is that of eating dairy foods. And while there's no clear reason as to why this is, I think my favorite explanation uh, is that in chapter 4, of the Song of Songs, the Torah is compared to milk. Like honey and milk, it lies under your tongue. And may it be that kind of life-giving sweetness for us all. <laughs>